5.8, not much by California standards, but people here on the East Coast were stunned because a quake like this doesn't happen every day. Barely ever happens, as a matter of fact. Joining us now is seismologist Jim Garrity, a Lamont research professor at Columbia University. Jim, good to have you with us here Thank this you. morning. Nice so historically, here. just how rare an event is this for the East Coast? It's quite unusual. I mean, we have a number of, of small earthquakes along the eastern seaboard, but to get an event that's up to a magnitude 5.8, it's, it's really only the second time this century, we think, that, uh, that one this large has occurred. Okay, Mineral Virginia, the epicenter of this quake. I mean, this is not what we would call a hot quake zone. There's not even a major fault line over here. So how, how likely is it that something like this would happen again, the fact that it even happened right now? So uh, the entire eastern seaboard is made up of, of really old, very very old rock that has many small faults within it. And the stresses in, that, that are in the Earth's plates, tectonic plates, are constantly pushing on those faults. And sometimes you get enough stress built up and you'll get an, a, an earthquake like this that, that occurs. I want to talk about how quickly that this quake did radiate all up and down the East Coast. Uh, oh, there were people here in New York yesterday that were all of a sudden receiving tweets, oh, people in Washington yeah, just got an earthquake. Right. And then seconds later, the ground starts shaking below their feet. How quickly did this move? So it, it, the the Epicenter happens, the, the earthquake happens, and it spreads out at a, at a rate that we know. It's about two and a half miles per second. But the, the, the interesting thing in the eastern part of the, the, of the U.S. is that the, the energy attenuates very slowly. And so the, the shaking is really much over a much larger region that we get this kind of shaking that, than we do, say, in the western U.S. where the earthquakes are more common. You know, it was mass. I mean, you talked about, we mentioned it before, 20 states affected by this. People anywhere from That's Cleveland right. to, That's right. to the, Georgia up to Maine felt this. The, really, the entire eastern seaboard, you know, felt this if you were in the right situation. And with a 5.8, that's a significant earthquake. Not a lot of damage done this time around. Why, why was that? Why was there not more damage on the So, I mean, part of it is just we happen to be fortunate. It was in a rural area where not a lot of built infrastructure. But at the same time, it, we do have good building codes in the U.S. overall, and, and the eastern U.S. certainly doesn't, isn't a, as aware of the earthquake danger, but it's something we, we do need to keep, keep an eye on and, and continue to build, to build buildings that can withstand this kind of damage. Where does this stack up historically with other earthquakes, especially ones that, uh, that we've seen uh, over the last couple of years, last few months here? So, I mean, the, the, we have to keep in mind that, that the really large, damaging mega earthquakes, like, like, for example, Japan, they're much more unusual. And, it's, it, and, and this, this kind of event happens many times uh, a year someplace in the world. Yep. You know, thousands of, of events of, of a magnitude five. And so, and so it's really just how, how close it is to places that, we, that we're worried about that we notice it. And as far as aftershocks, I mean, we saw the people in Mineral already suffered a, a minor aftershock That's after right. yesterday's. What can, what can we expect? Generally, these, the, the aftershocks will be smaller than the, the main shock, and they'll, they'll, over time, they'll become less frequent, and they'll become more smaller and smaller. And so every day, the risk of a large aftershock goes down. Okay. Press Jim Garrity, thanks. Good to see you.